electron configuration. So, electron configuration, there, there's going to be some terminology that um, just kind of goes into a little bit of theory. Um, we're not going to focus too much on it. Like, I, I won't be asking you guys too much on it uh, in testing. Okay, so don't worry about it. So, if, if it seems like some of the wording is a little over your head, don't worry about it. I'll, we'll focus a little more on what I want for you guys to take out of this lesson. Okay? So, in atomic physics and quantum chemistry, electron, electron configuration is the arrangement of electrons of an atom, a molecule, or physical structure. It concerns the way electrons can be distributed in the orbitals of the atom or molecule. So there's the term orbitals now, but we're talking about it in terms of the actual um, orbitals that lie within different energy levels, okay? That lie within different subshells, and we'll see that in a second, okay? Knowledge of the electron configuration of different atoms is useful in understanding the structure of the periodic table of elements. So we're gonna look at um, the elements of the periodic table, see why they're drawn uh, in the order that they're drawn, okay, based on the different energy levels. Okay? So the concept is also useful for describing the chemical bonds that hold atoms together. Okay? So a few, uh, few terms, and this is what I was telling you about, it's gonna, might seem to get a little over your head, okay? but I will explain this and simplify this um, with a couple of uh, examples. Okay? So electron configuration was first conceived of under the Bohr model of the atom. So this is something that we looked at in grade nine, okay, the Bohr model of, um, of the atom. And it's still common to speak of shells and subshells despite the advances in understanding of the quantum mechanical nature of electrons. So when we look at electrons on a quantum level, we, we, the, the, the idea of the shells that we used to know of is incorrect. Okay? Because within these shells, the electrons, we noticed that we had a maximum of eight electrons on you know, the second shell, the way we used to look at them. Okay? But in fact, it's not really eight electrons. They don't pretty much uh, spin around the nucleus of the atom in that same order. Okay? Because they, they spin in different planes um, using like the X, Y, Z planes like we do in math. Okay? So an electron shell is the set of allowed states an electron may occupy which share the same principal quantum number, and we use the letter N, okay, the number before the letter in the orbital label. An electron shell can accommodate two N2 two electrons. Okay? What it, we're looking at is that the first shell can accommodate two electrons, second shell can accommodate eight electrons, and now look at how many electrons on the third shell. 18 electrons. And that doesn't hold true with the way we used to draw the Bohr diagram. We knew that on the third shell, or third orbital, we were holding how many electrons? Eight, right? But here now we're looking at 18. Okay, and we'll, like I said, we will see um, what all that means in just a second. So, the factor of two arises because the allowed states are doubled due to the electron spin. Each atomic orbital uh, admits up to two otherwise identical electrons with opposite spin. One in a positive half spin, right, and another one in a negative half spin. And what we're going to look at, and we're actually, um, we're, actually we're not going to look at, sorry, uh, is when drawing electrons, we're going to draw them in this arrow format. One electron going upward to represent the positive spin, one electron going downward. Uh, and like I said, don't worry about this part right now. We're going to focus on what we're going to see in a moment. So a subshell is a set of states defined by the common angular momentum quantum number. Use the letter L within a shell. So the values of L can be either 0, 1, 2, or 3. Okay? And they correspond to something called the S, the P, the D, and the F labels. That will make a little more sense in just a bit. Okay, so we're using the following numbers to represent pretty much subshells. And now, to find the number of electrons from each subshell, we use the following equation here. Two open brackets, 2L plus one. So whatever this L value is, we're gonna substitute it into the equation Right? So if we, we're looking at L equal zero, so if L is equal to zero, we're going to put zero into this equation, 
2 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1. 1 times 2 will give me 2. Hence, 2 electrons in an S subshell. We have 6 electrons in what we call the P shell, meaning that now, instead of putting 0 into this equation, we are going to put 1 into the equation. So 2L, so 2 times 1, plus 1 is 2. Um, sorry, 2 plus 1 is 3. Times 2 is 6. And we get 6 electrons in the P shell. And that's how we get 10 electrons uh, in the uh, D shell and 14 in the F shell. So now we're going to be looking at, I, pretty much ideally, every element in the periodic table, including those uh, lactonides and actinides at the bottom, right? The ones that are separate away from the periodic table. Okay. So here is how the orbitals of subshells are occupied by electrons. This is what you're going to need to know, okay? The way it's, it's drawn out. So we have the angular values of 0, 1, 2, 3 here at the bottom. And we said that in the first... Okay. These, this represents the P shell. And the P shell shows us that we, have, we can occupy up to two electrons in that subshell. Right? So what we have is the S, 1S, we have 2S, 3S, 4S. So in the S orbital, which is designated by the angular number being zero, okay, we have two electrons that can fit in any one of these, these subshells. Okay? This one represents the P level the D level, and the F level. Now, let's look here to the N value. Okay? It's numbered 1 to 7. If you look at the periodic table, and there's a bit of a hint, what do you think these numbers represent? Hmm? The rows. Not the rows, but the period. periods. Right? So period 1, energy level number 1. First energy level, second energy level, third energy level, fourth, and so on and so on, right? Those seven. Okay? So those numbers that we have in front represents the energy level. Okay? The subshell, okay, denoted by S, P, D, and F, tell us pretty much the subshell in where are the electrons occupy. Okay. And what we're going to see here, and let me just clear what I've got on the screen, is when we look out for this pattern, and you need to be able to write out this pattern because using this pattern, okay, we'll be able to draw out what we call an electron configuration notation format of various atoms. So if we took, let's say, carbon, and we had to draw out, write out the electron configuration of carbon, we'd be using the following. And how does this work, and I'll show it to you guys again in just a second, is we cross out and we put it with, the, with an arrow starting from the bottom part here. So we have the 1s, meaning we're on the first energy level, right? So the uh, subshell s. And we know that we can hold up to two electrons, right? So the first energy level can hold up to how many electrons? Two electrons. The next, okay, the next is going to represent the second energy level. And again, in the second energy level, because it's a 2s, we can hold how many electrons? Two electrons, right? But after that, we cross out in this order, meaning... Okay, this, this is all going to make sense in just a second, so bear with me. Okay, bear with me. It's going to seem, seem complicated, but what we're going to do is we are going to identify what does S mean on the periodic table? What represented by P? What is D? What is F on the periodic table? Okay, and well, I'll show this again to you guys. So if you didn't understand this, don't worry. It will make a little more sense. So, so here is our periodic table. Do we agree with it? Right? That's a regular standard periodic table. It's like you learned a magic trick. Brian, so I'm going to show you guys a magic trick here. So, if we take 
How many electrons on each energy level? Each energy level. So here's one energy level, two energy levels. What do you notice? How many electrons can fit in, in, in these two, in all these energy levels? Two, right? And we're going to bring that over here. Right? So notice we have two electrons, sorry, two atoms that we're highlighting, groups one and two. Right? And the only one, the exception we bring over is helium. This is what we're going to note as the S. Okay? This is our S subshell. Now, we're going to move across, okay? and we're going to look at these over here. These are going to be represented by our P. All that? All that. Everything within here is our D. And all these down here are the F shell. Okay? They're going to represent the F shell. So, by being able to identify this from your periodic table, we'll be able to look at an element and go, okay, if we look at beryllium, we know that beryllium is found in the F shell, okay, containing the S shell. We've got the, the electrons, the number of electrons, but we know that beryllium is found period number two, okay, which means it's got two energy levels, okay? And in, in total, how many electrons does it have? We know. How many electrons does beryllium have? What's the atomic number? Four, Four which means how many protons? Four, how many electrons? Four. All stuff that we already know, right? We should already know that. Okay? So now we're, we know that we're, so beryllium is located here. We know beryllium's got a total of four electrons, but how are we going to draw them? So here it is again. So notice here we have the S, okay, the S um, subshells. For energy level one, two, three, so on to seven. Then we move over here to the P's. So the 2P, meaning the second energy level, third energy level, fourth. Now, make note of the following. Is the D. Based on what energy level, we, we know that our first transition metal appears here in the fourth energy level. But we are going to label it starting at 3D, 4D, 5D, 6D, okay? We're not gonna worry about why, just remember it to do it, okay? Because I don't wanna go into the whole story behind that, because then that's really gonna go over your heads, okay? So, electron configuration notation. We're gonna be drawing using the following format to write out the electron configuration of our various different atoms. Okay, so here we have hydrogen. So the first number that we show is the principal electron shell, right? That n value, right? So which means, what is the energy level that it occupies? First energy level, okay? The S, right, as we, when we broke down the periodic table, represents the orbital that's occupied. So what type of orbital is being occupied? Is it an S? Is it a P? Is it a D? Is it an F orbital? S. All right, S, right? And then this little su uh, superscript number, so like an exponent, so to speak, represents the number of electrons per subshell. So how many electrons can fit in the S orbital? Okay, and if we look at this, how many electrons can fit in this, in this 1s orbital? We have an s, 1s, 1s, so we have 2. In the 2s orbital, how many can fit? 2. two. In the 3s, Three. 2. 4s, two. 2. 5s, 2. 6s, two. 2. 7s, two. 2. Okay, so in the s orbital, as we said way back, all right, let me clear this and let me go back. Oh. In the s subshell, we can fit a total of two electrons, okay. right? So that's where these, these angular numbers came in, okay, to tell us how many electrons can fit. So in the P shell, we can hold up to six electrons, but in total along that whole 
right? So here's our S, right, orbital. Here's our P. We can hold a total of six electrons, right? Remember we said we denoted this as our P, and that P can hold up to six electrons, each for one for each one of the atoms, okay? The S can hold up to two, as we said, okay? The D can hold up to? Eight. Ten. ten. So there are two, four, six, eight, ten. Okay. Within the energy, the within the energy level. Sorry. Okay. So that's how we're going to start to order. And this one is only drawn for hydrogen. If we were to draw helium, okay, if we were to do helium, what energy level is it part of? One. What orbitals? S. S, right? And how many electrons in that subshell S? One. No, hydrogen has one. Oh. Helium has two. Okay. So now, we have lithium. Lithium is in what, uh, what, uh, what energy level? Two. Two, right? It's in the two energy level. But... It, does it occupy anything in the, in the first energy level? No. Electrons? Yes, it does. Right? It occupies energy in the uh, electrons in the first energy level, right? Does it have S electrons? No. How many? One. Not two. Two. Now, does it occupy? Does it occupy anything now from the S shell? So if you look at your periodic table, the second S shell. Subshell. Does it occupy how many electrons? One. One. To give us a total of how many electrons does it have? Three, Three electrons. Okay. We, we're on the second energy level, but we've filled up, filled up our first energy level, right? So which means these represent the inner electrons. These represent the electrons that are already at its stable state. So that electron that it typically wants to lose is the electron found on that S subshell. Okay. So order of electron configuration notation is as follows here. This is the order. We write it down as 1S, then the 2S, then the 2P, the 3S, then the 3P. Now notice it goes from 3P to 4S, right? Look, so you should be looking at your pure odd table, right? So your 4S here, potassium, calcium, but the first transition metal, remember what we said, the transition metals are not in the 4, as we would assume. It's in the 3D subshell, right? So we go 4S to 3D, and then we go to the 4P, right? Because we go, remember, S, Subshell, D, the transition metals, and um, P, the, um, the, a lot of the non-metals over on the, uh, the right-hand side. So how do we use this? Well, this is where that whole, how do I remember that? Instead of memorizing that order, right, you use this because you go 1S, 1S. Then from 1S, you go to 2S. Okay, so then from 2s, you go to 2p, followed by 3s, right? Then from 3s, you go to 3p, but remember we assume, right, that after the 4s, what do we assume we're going to go to? The 4p, right? But we don't. We go to a 3d, and then our 4p to our fifth energy level. So that's how it's written out. With the last one that we're looking at, if we go to the very end of the periodic table, will be our seven. So carbon, and here I have the periodic table up here. I have also the arrangement to allow us to cross out to show us the order, okay? So what we wanna do is we wanna find where carbon is on the periodic table, okay? So it's on which energy level? Two, right? So we know 
that we are starting, we're put, we've got two electrons in the 1s, right? So in the 1s, we have two electrons, right? Next, what's next? 2s, right, which represent these electrons, right, these atoms. So 2s, and how many electrons are in the 2s? Two, right? So carbon is on which subshell? The p subshell, right? But it's on the 2p subshell. How many electrons does it, the two, that p subshell um, occupy? How many electrons? One, two. Because remember, how many electrons maximum can the p subshell hold? Six. Six. But for carbon, it only has two, right? And now, do the, do the other count. How many electrons does carbon have? Six. One, two, plus another two, plus another two, to give us a total of six. So the electron configuration of carbon is as follows. So make sure that you're able to break down Right? That this is your S, this is, and this includes this S, right? Okay, this is our P, this here is our D, and that down here is our F. So we are occupying the first S's with two electrons on it. We are occupying the two S with two electrons on it. We are occupying the 2p, but in the 2p we're going one, two electrons over. Okay, so for carbon, the electron configuration for carbon is as follows. Okay. So, let's look at silicon. Okay, so where is silicon? What uh, energy level? Three. three, right? So we know it's three. In which subshell? What? P. Mm, P, right? So we know it's in the three P, right? So there's silicon in the three P shell. So how do we get to the three P? Well, we have the S to the two S to the two P to the three S, and we stop at the three P. So we start off. 1s. We know we have 2s. We know we have 2p. We know we have 3s. And we know we have 3p. But now we have to show how many electrons are found in each one of those subshells. So in the 1s, how many electrons? 2. How many in the 2s? 2. How many in the 2p? 6. How many in the 3s? 2. And how many now for where silicon is? 2. So as long as you have this little chart here and that you have the ability to break down, and remember, this is your S, which includes that. This is your P. This is your D. And down here, this is your F. And we said, how many electrons can be held in the S? Two. How many in the uh, P? Six. Six. How many in the D? Five. Ten. And how many here in the F? Fourteen. Okay. So the maximum number really that you can have for any P would be what? Six. Six. The maximum number you can have for any D would be 10. The maximum number you can have for any S, 2 electrons. Okay. So, try potassium. 1S, 2S, 3S, 4S. Okay. And that's it, right? So we have 1S. 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 4s. So in order for us to reach to that 4s, all these have to be full, right? And how do we tell? We don't even have to look at the PRI table because we know that all the s's 
can hold up to how many electrons? Two. Two. Except for that 4s because we are only occupying one electron in that or s orbital. Now, how many electrons on all those p can hold? Oh, it's so easy now. Yeah, it ain't that hard. Okay, so are we clear with that? Oh, are we? So if it was calcium, which one? It would be 4s? 2. I was just thinking of the last one. I didn't the beginning question. Okay. There is a simpler way of drawing instead of showing all this, but we'll, we'll get to it in just a second. We meant when we were drawing our Bohr diagrams and we were drawing, let's say, our, um, you know, our atom, whatever atom X is, and we were drawing these orbitals. When in fact, these orbitals are really energy levels. So we have the inner energy level, the 1s, right? The 2s would be around here, but within this 2s, you'd have your p going within. Simplified uh, electron configuration. Okay, so this is how we're gonna simplify some of them. An alternate way of writing the electron configuration for carbon is He, 1s2, 2p2. What is helium? What is helium? What do we know helium as being? Not, don't tell me it's the stuff we put in balloons to make them rise. <laughs> okay, it's a noble gas, right? Because what do we know about all noble gases? They're full, right? They're stable because their valence shell, or sorry, their valence energy level is full, right? So which energy level is full? The 1s. Because now we're on the second energy level, right? Which is 2s and then the uh, 2p2. So carbon, if we look at the periodic table, is on the second energy level, which means that all the ones in front of it, okay, so represent the noble gas. So instead of writing this 1s in square brackets, we write down the symbol for, for, for helium. Because the noble gas that represents the 1s2, okay, is helium. Okay, so we'll look at it in just a second uh, with, uh, with our example. Okay, so let's look at an example here. So potassium, right? We know potassium. Okay, here's potassium. Okay, so here it's, sorry, oops, it's on the fourth. Sorry, second. So we know it's occupying the 1s, or it's occupying the 2s, the 2p, right? 3s, 3p, the 4s, right? How many on this uh, 1s? Two electrons. So all the s's, two electrons, except for the 4, right? Because it is occupying how many electrons? One. How about all the p's? Six. But now, it's on the fourth energy level, which means all this represents which noble gas? Argon. So instead of writing all that, we can write argon. So we go up until argon, and then after argon, it's 4s1. So instead of drawing all that, we find where argon is, and then we recognize that.